Welcome to Wealth Well Done. Together, we'll cover a wide range of important topics surrounding money and the impact it has on our lives. From the sophisticated and highly valuable planning techniques of the ultra wealthy to the commonly underutilized biblical teachings. Together, we'll work to improve our relationship with money and our effectiveness in stewarding it well. Here's your host, Eric Scoville. All right, welcome to the 53rd episode of the Wealth Well Done podcast, where we lean into the tactical, practical, and spiritual advice to help you do your wealth well done. Last week, we, last couple weeks, we've done a uh, reposted episodes with Nathan Rickner, where Pastor Nathan is talking about um, comfortable Christianity, and we're trying to to really call that out in us, especially you know as Western society here, the the type of Christianity that we live and just how far off that is from what the Bible talks about. And uh, this week we are building on that. And so I am thrilled to have Greg Downing on. Um, Greg, will you give a will you give a little background here to to who you are, a little bit of, of your past? Help us understand that from the from the from the you know the earlier days into the business days now. Um, but as we get into this discussion, what we talked about is the, the, the words that Greg actually used right before we got started here is I love talking about the things that people don't want to talk about. And so we're going to get into that. So will you give, give us a little background who you are, help us get to know you as we get started here. Sure. And I appreciate it, Eric. So, uh, I've been doing early stage companies pretty much my whole career. Uh, I, I found out in college that there's a thing called medical device sales and I was intrigued by it because at Purdue, they talked about consulting or ag sales and I didn't want to do either. So um, anyway, so I started in that, that gave me a flavor for early stage companies. It's a J and J company focused on women's health. They licensed technology from Stanford did really, really well. Um, but it was also want to know how was that done? Like what is, what was the licensing deal? Why Stanford? Where I, I was more intrigued by how the companies were built. So that kind of set me sure. on my journey, did well, got pulled into the dot com with a Kleiner Perkins, Sequoia, Oakwood, you know, heavily financed company. That company got acquired before it went public, jumped into a mobile computing company, and it just kind of, you know, rinse and repeat, just different segments, a lot of it being in healthcare. Uh, the last company I helped be a part of was a pediatric implant company. It went public in 2017, um, helped raise money. That's where I learned how to raise money as a startup. It's like we had very few people on the team in 2007, and it was, okay, we, this is an expensive business, <laughs> so <laughs> orthopedics. So it was, I had to figure it out and um, learn how to do private placements, learn how to raise money, and then kind of just grew. And then in 2010, started Purim Ventures, which is biblical, goes back to the book Esther, as the name was given to us. There's a, I can go down that rabbit hole if you want me to, but yeah, yeah, it, was, it was really just coming together and forming these micro companies around the entrepreneur. And, and back then it was... I had a lot of physician investors. And so physicians found out I was now solo and they said, Hey, can you look at this? Can you fix that at an investment group, an angel investment group that came to me with one of their own investment deals saying, Hey, this isn't working. Can you, do you think you can fix it? And so by my wife's blessing, she said, stop jumping in these startups and building everybody else's kingdom. This is where you got to build your own like this. Now help, help them all form your own company. And so that's where Perm was born. And I love the symbolism with Perm. And we just coming off the, the holiday and I'm Scotch Irish, right? So I'm just a huge fan of, of, uh, of Israel and ancient history and, and archeology span and all that kind of good stuff. But the symbolism, not that I ever compare myself to, you know, Esther, right. But the symbolism of where she was stuck and okay. either she revealed who she was as a Jew to Xerxes, you know, everybody saw the movie 300. I'm pretty sure it's the same guy <laughs> <You know? laughs> yep. that that person or she let her people get slaughtered. And not that I've ever been in that type of you know life or death situation with investors or companies. Right. It's not that level. But I've often found myself even doing the startup stuff in between the CEO and either the big clients or the investors, but remaining behind the scenes. So let God get the glory. Let's watch him connect the dots. We go all in with clients. We bring everything in the kitchen sink and we've gotten we've had an incredible run. And then um, I've been a speaker. That's where you and I met at these family yeah. office events. I'm typically the guy that goes to early stage growth companies, but we help companies triage that are past like the seed stage looking at a trying to, or their friends and family. And they're just trying to figure out what do I do next? 
And we're able to come in having done this, you know, dozens and dozens and dozens of times and to be able to fix and build these companies from stem to stern to where when they land on an investor's desk, it just jumps out and everything yeah. is just so buttoned up that they get it and they want to go down that process. So we've been doing perm since 2010. Uh, we're growing rapidly. And um, for 10 years, we did no marketing. So now we just started doing a little bit of outreach. A lot of our business is referral. And I get to meet people like you. And, and a lot of it's connecting dots. It's this is old school. It's relationship built, um, but it's very hands on. So we're a hybrid venture firm and strategic business development uh, okay. firm. So, All right. And, <clears throat> and since we're not going to spend as much time talking about that, and business applies to us, and maybe maybe we will here. I, I just wanted to to make this plug, if you will, that that um, the the deals that that Greg just referenced that that jump off when uh, when I looked at the the last one that I just looked at for him, it was a for sure thing. I, a I wanted to get behind the founder of this. I uh, wanted to partner with Greg. We had an investor who this is perfectly fit for, and so. Um, yeah, I, I would I would absolutely encourage you to if you're an investor or you know if you're a startup, but especially if you're an investor, to to look into into uh, Perm and how you can uh, find some of these type of deals that that might be a really good fit for you if you are in that uh, if you're looking for private equity space. And yeah, disclaimer there, not financial advice for you, <laughs> for you. Uh, make sure you consult your own financial team for that. Um, all right. I'm going to pray for us here if, to get started because I think the, the discussion that we're getting ready to have here, um, it, it just needs the Holy Spirit in this. So, mm -hmm. so Holy Spirit, we're just, we are, <laughs> we're so grateful for who you are, for your ministry and for how you continue to work uh, through us and reveal yourself in, in so many unique ways and, and point everything to Jesus. And so we just ask that, that um, you guide this discussion here and that you help you help not only us to uh, speak speak the words that you're giving us, but please help the, the hearts of those who are listening to to receive this. If this is new to them or if this is uncomfortable, uh, let it not be a rejection and, and a no, but let it be uh, you know just a, a humility that says, Holy Spirit, help me understand more. And if something we're saying is not of you, then let it be let it fall on deaf ears and let that be rejected as well, because we want this to to all. Be truthful and glorifying to you. So it's in your name, Jesus, that we pray. Amen. Amen. Great way to start it off. <laughs> yeah. Well, I, I think we're going to need it. So, um, <laughs> so, so here's where Greg and I were talking about starting with this. We're going to we're going to hit a few of these topics that um, that are absolutely necessary, that are foundational to everything that that we are encountering in this world, um, and they're just they're they're difficult to to find knowledgeable people to, to talk about who aren't um, who don't burn their credibility with you know with their other uh, theology that may be getting getting too off course and, and, and it you know, becomes extra biblical so um, Greg from your perspective can you start off with a little bit about spiritual warfare mm -hmm. like what what is spiritual warfare to you and and where are you seeing that um, that at work today? Hmm. Wow. Everywhere. <laughs> well, yeah, I guess, uh, there. <laughs> you know, I, I, yeah, I'm, we're blessed to talk to a lot of people. Right. And I, I think I can't imagine being in today's world and not having some sort of spiritual foundation. Right. And you and I have a, a common thread in Christ. Right. It's right. We've done our homework. Right. We've taken the red pill. We've gone down the hole. And, and, and for me, I've studied other religions. I've studied the major ones, even some of the pseudo Christian cult ones. Um, just because I, I wanted to, I want to know how to talk to people. Like I'm, I'm always interested in history, but I think when you look at spiritual warfare, if you don't acknowledge it, you're going to get blindsided. Um, and we all, nobody makes it out of this alive, right? We're, we're all going to die. Right. And right. you can meet the spiritual person that has no relationship with Christ. And they just know, like they, they know something's bigger than, than this, than this life, right? It's bigger than what social media tells us we need to achieve in life. And I think an analogy that was given to me years ago was, you know, humans were made in God's creation, right? And we can get into 
the sons of God and what the what it was in early in Genesis and then where human came into beings and that conflict that arose and where sin entered the like all beginning and all that stuff. But when you look at what the initial design of what God had us, right? He we were a lot of us kind of wander through this life seeking money, seeking fame, whatever it may be, but we're still empty, right? right. I've seen a lot of these atheists who are very, you know, uh, wealthy say, you know what, having the 12 cars just didn't really satisfy. And I still don't know what it is, right? right. It's kind of goes back to Solomon. It's, you're just kind of chasing after the wind. You, you're, you're not going to take this with you. Steve Jobs took nothing with him. So we're all going to end someday in the, in the future. In, in the span of eternity, this life is a blip and it happens super fast. So I just turned 50. And I'm like, whoa, whoa, what happened? Right. <laughs> so, but it's going, once you make that connection to the spiritual realm and truly acknowledge and embrace that it's not, it's beyond what our eyes are, can see, what our, what our senses can experience. Quantum physics helps, I think, um, confirm all this stuff. It's like, it's way beyond our senses. And so if you start going down that rabbit hole, you're going to quickly realize there's good and there's evil. Like we just saw what happened in, in Moscow at the, at the theater, right? There's, there's evil people in this world. Where does that come from? Where does the possession come from? I've been in situations where I felt that presence of, of evil, that there's only one way to it. There's only one thing it could have been, right? Yeah. But I've also been in the situations where I've used the power of Christ's name authoritatively and i saw evil scatter from that room that i was yeah. in and going yeah. that again i was already convinced right but to actually feel it and to experience it and then to connect with others and we've had business partners people that i think i'll get you uh, hopefully an interview with jason but you talk to some of these folks and it's like they go on the front lines and i think if you want to really make it the most out of this life, embracing that spiritual aspect, but also understanding that we're at war. There's a demonic realm that came before us where we were actually superseding them. Like the, that's where God created man. It, it was to procreate. It was his new, the new child, almost like the new part of the heavenly family. Yeah. Those that were for them, the, the, the ones that ended up falling saw the jealousy, right? They wanted to procreate like humans could, right? So right. They, they did, they violated God's kingdom. But when you go back and you start digging into this stuff, it's fascinating. Like Michael Heisner's book, like, you know, the unseen realm and some of these other things is going, it's all there. It's just, it's been, there's a veneer, I think on Christianity today, at least that I've experienced. And I've been Presbyterian, I've been Baptist, I've, you know, I've, I've been to different churches and going, there's there's the milk and cookies Christianity that gets you saved, which is which is a good thing. But it, the stuff that I've when I'm again I haven't been to every church, but it's going, how deep does it go into spiritual warfare? Because if you're it's like going into battle, if you're not trained, you're gonna get you're gonna get your legs knocked out from underneath you, or worse, and you won't right. know how to fight back. And the spiritual fight will come. If you haven't experienced it yet, it will come to you. So <laughs> Where do you, where's that life preserver? Where are those tools? How do I fight against the enemy? What words do I, like, how do I do this? Like to right. me, that's a topic that's not talked enough. Well, I want to hit two things that you just talked to, that you talked about here that first of all, that, that comfortable milk and cookies, the, the thing at, at the end of, at the end of Mark, and then there's, there are different spots in, in the, in the gospels where, where Jesus says some stuff that is really uncomfortable if you actually understand like so you can you can read here when it says this is this the you know basically the, the last couple paragraphs of, of mark's account of jesus's life and so jesus says to him or says to them he's talking to to the disciples here he says go into all the world and preach the gospel into all to all creation we we, we know that right we know that, that he's told us to do that whoever believes and is baptized will be saved but whoever does not believe will be condemned. No Christian's gonna, no Christian's gonna, you know, have a problem with that. It's this next one that gets really tough. And these signs will accompany those who believe. So, okay, so we said whoever believes and is baptized will be saved. This is what it means to be a believer. 
and and I think if you you know you get into the historical language here and understand what that word belief actually means, it's not what we think of when we think of belief. And so, the, you know, these signs will accompany those who believe. In my name, they will drive out demons. We're gonna get it. And it says says other stuff too. They'll speak in new tongues. You know, they'll pick up snakes with their hands. They will drink deadly poison. It will not hurt them. They will place their hands on sick people, and they will get well. But the very first one that he talks about here, which every one of those things is, is uncomfortable and confronting to Christians, especially who just you know who use the fire insurance of you know I got I believe in Jesus, so therefore I'm saved. Well, if your belief doesn't look like this, then we need to we just need to question. I'm not telling someone, hey, if you don't, it's not all it's all works based. If you don't do all these works, that you're not saved. That's not this at all. You know, there's this balance between grace and faith, um, but our belief is supposed to look like this. And so that's what we, we just get off with is we don't understand that there's going to be challenges, that there's going to be testing, that this is not, this is not a simple thing. And you talk about the, the prepared for battle piece, the, and so I, I'm, I'm in Luke right now, so I've been reading through this. And so Jesus, he, this is right when he sends out the 12. So he's given that they've all, they've all seen some of the miracles. They've heard his preaching and then he sends them out. He, you know, he gave them again. We, we talk about demons. Look at how like you can't you can't read through the Gospels and and you either have to completely ignore the fact of, of all of the content that he talks about demons. Like again, first thing he says, he gave them power and authority to drive out all demons and then to cure diseases, <laughs> and and he sent them out to proclaim the kingdom of God and to heal the sick. He tells them, take nothing with you, no staff, no bag, no bread. Like he didn't say, hey, here's a bunch of money. Here, I've, you know, I've set up accommodations for you. I talked to this person. They're going to receive you. He tells them, go on, go on, go do it. Here you go, 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 go try. Go, go, go test it. Go learn what you do. You know, learn how it's going to go. They come back and they're telling them how great it was. Jesus, you know, all these great things happen. Well, they're trying to have this isolated time. They come back in, you know, they get back to a spot and people find out where they're at, where they're at. And now all these, you know, this crowd rushes them again. And so now this is when they feed the 5,000. And so, so they just got their little testing. They just were trained. They were sent out to go try this. And then they say, hey, send the, send the crowd out to go get some food here. And Jesus turns around and says, you give them something to eat. Again, he knew what he's going to do, but he said, you do it. I just trained you, just sent you out. You, you got a little more battle tested. And now you do it. And then they, they couldn't. So then he helps them a little bit more. And it's just like that. He, but you, he is preparing us for battle and this this life of christianity is not meant to just be milk and cookies mm -hmm. and and we just we want the good part of this like well let's you know let's let's you know love each other and and let's not understand that love you know means we have to tell people the truth and it, he, we just want the the cushy stuff without the meat of jesus and jesus was not cushy mm -hmm. and so i just think as you talk about getting ready for what spiritual warfare actually means like it is a battle yeah, it's, it's yeah, it's a it's a battle. It's it's and there's like anything else, you know, I've been doing mixed martial arts, different stuff, like different five different martial arts in my lifetime. Um, it's like I want to be the most dangerous person in the room. That's just my goal. Um, mm -hmm. Maybe call me what it called. Is it uh, toxic masculinity? I'll, I'll embrace that. Like, I don't care. Um, I have two daughters and a beautiful wife. Uh, so that's my job. My job is to protect. But I've always wanted to be the most dangerous person in the room. Not that I want to go beat up people. Right. So I'd rather walk into a room of men where I don't feel frightened or that I couldn't defend my family. Spiritual warfare is the same thing. It's actually more intense. And it's if like I couldn't go and defend someone in a in a bar fight, I don't go to bars, but you know, if you if I if I was, right, if I was gonna be in the street, see someone assaulted, right? I want to know that I can handle myself and protect them. Spiritual warfare is one of those things where I think. There's deliverance ministry that's now getting more traction and people are talking about it, which is great. Right. Um, but it's going, it's kind of like going into battle with like ruck, a rucksack and a slingshot, like uh, not a David slingshot, but we're talking about like a Fisher Price one. Like you're not, <laughs> you're not equipped. And I'm, by the way, I'm, no, I'm nowhere on that expert level. Sure. I've studied it enough. I've gone deeper in the rabbit holes. I've, I, I, I want to study. Like I, I told my friends, right? It's like, if, if you're not a believer, I have a lot of Jewish friends. It's like, they can't deny it. Like you have the DNA that traces back to, you know, I'm Scotch Irish. Like, I think 
the Irish came up with Halloween. Like, woohoo, like we did a great job. You know, it's like, but so much history comes from Israel, right? Yep. So it's going, you can't deny that if you're Jewish, right? So just read the book, <laughs> like read the book, pause, read other literature that's around that time period. I mean, there's a lot of, as you know, a lot of ancient literature that pops up all around Mesopotamia that supports a lot of this stuff. But it's going, if, if you don't have the instruction, um, how do you drive the bus? Like, how do you, how do you fight if you don't have the training? And there's some, God doesn't make it impossible, right? Using Christ's name with authority, pray, praying as if it has already occurred, thanking God for the answer, like praying with confidence is something I had to learn. Um, oh. You don't like, oh, please help me, help me. It's like, thank you for helping me. Thank you for seeing me. Thank you for allowing me to see what I need to see. Thank you for equipping me with what I need to have. Um, help me be a light type of a thing. But the authority of Christ's name in spiritual warfare is the most powerful name in heaven and earth. Like, in, right. it, it, it is what it is. Like, go test it out. <laughs> like, <laughs> it is, we got to believe, right? You can't be some of the other people that, you know, did it in, in Jesus's name and they can't understand or they did it in Paul's name or whatever. And they didn't understand what happened. It's like, right. it has to be genuine but he does. And he, when we die, how Christ, how it's been described in scripture is we're, we're not below the angels, right? We're actually above the angels in that hierarchy. If you can understand that and trace that back to where the fall of Satan and where evil comes from, you can see the sibling rivalry. <laughs> like you can see right. why there's that hatred, why, where the demonic comes from. Um, and, God gives us the abilities to fight back. I've seen healings that, you know, I, I was a product of, of a, of a healing on the spot through prayer. Like I, I'll tell you this quick story. I was, as my, I had my two young daughters, we were living uh, in Indiana at the time. We went to this big natural park, right. And we're running around and the kids are chasing me. And I ran up this two story um, tree house, so to speak. And so this big thick ones, like the, the big, log ones. And I ran up the side of it. I should have climbed up side of the side of this little metal ring, but I ran on top of the ring. And then I jumped from one level to another thinking I was Spider-Man. <laughs> and I forgot to look a little bit higher and my head went right into the roof and it knocked me back. And I felt like, you know, oh. a story hit my head on a rail and I've been in neurosurgery, you know, and I know enough about that type of infl inflammation in the brain and that you really don't want to get this box thing inflamed because they can't go anywhere. And, um, and my wife got around, grabbed the kids, grabbed my little nephew. They put hands on me because I was like, every heartbeat felt like my head was going to explode. I'm like, I just hit my head in two areas that I shouldn't be hitting it. And it was really painful. <clears throat> and they prayed for me. And I, as some of us remember as a kid, I don't know if you remember this, is the little, you know, cracking the egg on the head. And you're like, oh, I cracked an egg. And you feel it. the pain literally split and melted off my body. Felt it right then and there. Now here's the wow. here's the cool thing. So I was fine. We still went to the hospital. You know, they checked me out, going, just don't you know run your face to any more, you know, playgrounds. <laughs> but the, here's the cool thing. When about a week or two later, my little nephew at the time, Quentin, was talking to his mom, and his mom was now talking to my wife about, hey, what happened? And he's like, Yeah, Quint, did you guys pray? Because Quentin said you guys prayed together. And they, you guys put hands on on him, right? And you learn about energy. I'm in healthcare, right? So you learn about energy, energy medicine. Some of the most powerful stuff that's coming is energy related. Go figure, right? Huh. At a frequency that man, that, that will blow you away. That it's the, you know, that level of frequency, you know, and, and the energy side of things. So that stuff is real, but they had their hands on me. And my nephew told his mom, yeah, I had my hands on uncle Greg. And all of a sudden it got really, really hot. It got so hot. I had to take my hands off. I'm like, well, well, explain that. But, right. you know, I, I knew what I had, but it's one of those things where I felt it instantly. Now, prayer sometimes happens immediately. Sometimes it happens over a period of time. But it was prayer with authority and power that my awesome wife is able to do. With, and, and that was, you can't deny that. And I think that is tied to that spiritual realm. And if we got to em embrace it, learn about it, go deep into it and then learn how to equip yourselves to fight against it. All right. I don't, that, that story is so powerful. And thank you for sharing that. 
Um, the I think what, what's jumping out at me with that is is beyond the the healing because I did the, the healing's incredible, and then the testimony beyond that. But to the point of you had a family who was prepared. That is not that's not someone who's you know who's never picked up their Bible before. That that is you know able to say oh someone someone might be about to you know have an aneurysm here like let's let's you know dear god like Mm -hmm. that's not that that's that's someone who's prepared for battle they've done this and so if someone you know so many people and let's let's speak to the religious sect of of christianity here that you know the the, their their church stays inside a box right and not not everyone this is this that would be that would be a total ignorance to to make a blanket statement there but there is just a larger uh teaching there that, that the christianity kind of lives here in these mm-hmm. walls mm-hmm. and you don't need to read the bible if you have not read the bible and you call yourselves a christian then i'm not telling you you're not i'm just saying i would i would i would do some praying into that and ask and ask him if you need to read the bible or if you mm-hmm. if you can just have your own relationship with them and, and then because then what happens is you become your own god you form your own truth but so you guys have prepared mm-hmm. you, you you have done that so when you heard spiritual warfare that's not like some crazy talk that you just uh, you ignore like you need to lean in so anyone listening to this podcast and if you came in listening to you know hear about money well guess what this applies to money too there's a spirit of mammon and and so um so anyways i just a you know what a fantastic job to your to you and your wife for how you guys have handled your faith and then how you raised your kids to handle that too um but it's just it's the power of god but for people who lean in and engage they don't you you don't just naturally or you know you don't just absorb that Mm -hmm. there is you have to request that you have to go and and do the work and so i I just think that's that's the the main thing that we need to be talking about here is spiritual warfare is real and there there's just story after story after story some of them will be you know easily believable some of them will be much harder and you know hearing you know you talk to uh, a brain surgeon who's encountered so many of of these type of wounds that's going to be tough for them to believe until they've tapped into the supernatural Mm -hmm. so um yeah fantastic to you guys there the the the, there's there's two parts of this this um scripture that that jumped out of me so again in luke as i'm I'm rolling through that one then jesus sent out the 72 and the 72 went out and and again two by two went out and preached preached the word and they came back, the, the 72 returned with joy and said, Lord, even the demons submit to us in your name. And Jesus replies, I saw Satan fall like lightning from heaven. I have given you authority to trample on snakes and scorpions and to overcome all the power of the enemy. Nothing will harm you. There's another really important piece that, that adds a second context to the, in that next verse. But just staying there for a minute, like, I've given you the authority over all of that. Why would he do that if... if if we didn't need to, if we were not in spiritual warfare, why would he make such an emphasis around demons? Why would he tell you, I've given you authority to trample on snakes and scorpions and to overcome all the power of the enemy? Nothing will harm you. Yeah. And I look at, you look at that. And then another, one of the, one of the things I like about in the section of the new Testament that a lot of people kind of gloss over is that, you know, when Christ walked into the temple, right. And it turned mm-hmm. it into basically a bazaar, like they're trading right. and, animals and money. And it's like, that's, this is my, my father's house. And he got angry and he made a cord and he chased everybody out. And it's like, he wasn't this waif of a guy that you see in the Renaissance pictures. Like he was an imposing <laughs> figure. I mean, he's a son of God. Like I'm, I'm sure he was not, uh, you know, not wearing the gap jeans. Like, so, you know, it's, he was a Jesus powerful, not a skinny jean a, kind of guy. attractive, you know, strong, figure that had a ton of compassion right so but it's going who did he war against the most all throughout the new testament it's the mm-hmm. religious authorities so how has that changed at all like i i go back to we're in this kind of phase with our family where we're not attending a big church like we we did that we can get into why we're not there um but it's going we haven't left our faith but it's going i want to go deep into the rabbit holes i want to explore like i've been i think i told you this i've been stuck in genesis for i don't know six months now <laughs> yeah. so but there's so many places that are 
all this is why it's so important to read scripture yourself, right? It's going get get a study Bible that can help because you got to read it in the context of the time and try to get back to the closest Hebrew interpretations. But it's going, there's so much meat there that if you just get into it, it will reveal itself to you. No other book does that. No other book has the prophecies that actually came true, right? So when I study these other world religions, that's what I came back to is going, this is the only book that foretells the future and the prophecies around Christ are indisputable. You, you, you look at from a statistical standpoint, it's it's statistically impossible right. that he fulfilled the scriptures that he did, but he did. So he is who he says he is, or, or he's the greatest magician that's ever, you know, worked and operated on the planet. It's going, he gave us that power and authority. And if, we, and at least for me, my thought is if I can picture myself in God's kingdom in how he views us, like once we accept Christ, he doesn't see you as Eric, the human being, right? He doesn't, right. he sees us as we're now in his family. Like we we're completing the picture, right? He's helping us complete that picture, but he wants us to exercise that power and authority on this earth. You know, you, you hear these right. people, like, Oh, just, you know, it's just the election. It's just whatever God's will. It's like, no, he, he, he doesn't want you to be passive. Christ wasn't passive. You know, <laughs> oh, turn the other cheek. You're taking that out of context. Like, it's like, he, a lot of people take that out of context. A lot of people isolate these little things and going, if you look, and this is why I like the Old Testament as well, is going, he empowered his people to go out and conquer, to win on behalf of the kingdom. Right. And there was a lot of evil in the world when you, when you, I mean, there still is, but there's this constant battle going back and forth, but he wants us to utilize the toolbox that he's given us. And it's not that complex it's just you got to have to have a relationship with him and you have to be able to know when to pull it out and when you're in battle and when you take off, you know, the the little soft, fluffy mitts and you actually use, you know, brass knuckles. Like you've got to you've got to go on the offensive. And I think my concern in this world is we're raising, you know, there's a lot of soft men out there right. um, and that have never been in a fight, you know, so to speak, or they've they've and they're they're into the, you know, how do I look on Instagram type of thing? And it's me, me, me. I'm seeing that just having two daughters, right? How that generation of men, there's more of them that, you know, you could just kind of do without. But it's going, we're, there's a systematic demasculization that's going on on so many fronts that right. at the same time makes you so self-absorbed and so distracted that you don't go into these other realms that you really, that God wants us to be spending time in, which is prayer, which is, you know, fasting, knowing how to equip ourselves, how to fight, how to call upon his name, how to do good things for the kingdom. Like that's, that's the enemy has this exact, has the population exactly where he wants us occupied, confused and self-absorbed. Right. You know, right. I ignorant to the word. And, and yeah, I, I think so on the next episode here, you know, we're going to we're going to talk about weak men, and and then we're going to, we're going to also get into you know the the church here. Um, but the I think I think for us just to what you said. So so he's given so he, he wants relationship with us, and he wants us equipped. And so I think it's not it's not an either or on this, but it's both. Like we have work to do here. He has equipped us. If we choose to stand up and say, here I am, Lord, he's equipped us for that. But he wants relationship with us, too. And so th there's got to be the balance on all of this here. But you have to go read the Bible. You you can't hear Greg talk about this and then go say that that there it is. I'm going to go join the front lines now. You know, give me give me a weapon and I'm going to I'm going to go kill bad guys like that. That's not this because that that next line of that scripture when I talked about, you know, I've given you you know, authority to trample on snakes and scorpions to overcome all the power of the enemy. Nothing will harm you. Well, that sounds, go out there and get it, boys. But then right after he says, however, do not rejoice that the spirits submit, that these spirits submit to you, but rejoice that your names are written in heaven. Mm. And so there is work to do here on this earth. But remember that the, the, the prize is heaven because we're not going to, we are not going to, we can push back the enemy we can take back ground. We can storm the gates of hell and we can 
uh, we can do what he called us to do, which is make his bride a beautiful church or, you know, make his church being the bride you know, beautiful and ready for uh, ready for him to return, for the bridegroom to return. And we have to do that. But at the end of the day, like, you know, we, we just got done having um, conversations around all sorts of stuff with, with trafficking. And uh, it's some of the stuff out there is so hard to believe. But if Baal and Moloch were talking about that in the Old Testament here, you know, of child sacrifice and other things, like, they're not gone. You know, th th those spirits are still here. And so if we go take out one bad guy, th those spirits are still here. And so it's not, it's not, can't just be about the fight. It has to be about ultimately our eyes are on you on, on the prize, Jesus. And while we're here, use us. Let us, let us go be dangerous for your kingdom. Like you said, let's be dangerous men, dangerous warriors here for the kingdom. And that way, but the, the goal isn't to go beat up evil spirits. The goal is to go win more people into, into that kingdom. Absolutely. So, man, yeah, I very just, well said. <laughs> will you give a, so we're going to wrap this one up and we'll, like I said, we'll pick up next week on, on weak men. And we're going to talk a little bit more about, about the church and kind of the wolf, wolf and sheep's clothing in the church. Will you give like kind of a, just a, a, a summary or a, a wrap for, for someone hearing this, who has not engaged in spiritual warfare, not, not realized you know, the, the, the game that they're playing there, you know, it's the hunter who, you know, there's two, two sides of this, you know, two sides of this game called hunting. And, you know, only one of the people know that they're in the game, like help, help them understand a little bit of what, what our call should actually be regarding this. Sure. Um, well, I think, well, it's like physical training, right? It's like going to the gym. It's like eating well, it's like drinking water. It's like all these things got to be feeding yourself. It's, you know, how to, you know, take care of your vehicle, you know, how to go to the gym, you know, how to, you know, how to do that stuff, how to maybe hopefully put out a fire, stuff like that. It's like, this is another skill set that we should all embrace. Again, I'm not an expert at it. I've utilized it and I've, I've seen what happens, but at the end of the day, and there's a, you've probably heard this saying, it's going, you know, most people that seek God at the 11th hour die at 10 30. It's like, oh, and I've got friends that I've been, you know, sharing faith with and witnessing to that are just stubborn. Yep. And, Oh, you know, I'll get to it. I'll get to it. But we're not promised tomorrow. You right. know, not to sound cliche, but that we're not. It's you can go at any time. And what I want to hear, what you want to hear is well done, good and faithful servant. Right. Absolutely. I want to make it into the kingdom. Like wide is the path. Right. Narrow is the gate. And it's going, I want to make it through that. And I know I've done that through accepting Christ. But like you've been saying, it's not over th at that level. It's, and this is where I think the, the business side of stuff, the, the trials and the tribulations of life and what we do in, in our mastermind, right? It's going, all those experiences, especially the bad ones are refine you into where you can help others and where you can serve others, right? right? You do that in your work. Like you you know what not to do, right? So you help your clients do what's right. That this is where this is. It's just going, if you know, you're going to die, then there's, there's very few of us that haven't you know, that won't experience that, you know, right. um, few people, you know, a couple people, what two people mentioned the Bible, right. we got Enoch and Elijah. Right. So it's like, um, you know, we're all, we're all going to, you know, see the end someday soon. We don't know when that's going to come that you have to acknowledge the spiritual realm. And I think like we'll get into, you know, a lot of people have left the church or there's a, the growing side of paganism because they don't ignore the spirituality. It's just spirituality is, is within, you know, it's like, no, you're not your own God. Sorry. It didn't you know, <laughs> you create anything, you know, sorry, right. but it's, it's just, it, it's, it's fascinating. It's not laborious and it's a skill that you'll be so thankful that you have. I, you know, it's like being a gun owner. It's like, I'd rather have a gun and not need one than need a gun and not own one. And you know, the, the situations I've been I've seen and I've had friends that have ex experienced the demonic and have seen the wicked and have been able to stand against it. It's, it's a, so much, it, it, you know, it's the world we live in. And as you're seeing this, you know, time is limited, right? I, I mean, we've been saying the end times is coming, it's coming, but I think everything, how it's aligning is, is, is more in alignment than it's ever been from a geographical right. standpoint, from scripture standpoint, from you just like pretty much everything's in place. We still don't know. 
what generation, right? But we know our generation, this generation when Israel was founded, should not pass until the coming of, of, of Christ, right? So we know it's sometime. So sometime soon. So do you want to be an active participant or do you want to be, you know, using filters on Instagram and looking good? It's like, you know, <laughs> do something about it and surround yourself with good men, good women and, and sharpen, sharpen your skill set and just, you know, it's all there. It's all there in scripture. It's, it's not that complex. Like you don't have to do these, you know, not to knock the Catholic church, but you don't need the incense. You don't need all the costumes. It's like, you don't, you just need Christ. You need his name. And you just, you, you need to recognize evil when you see it and call it out. And that's, right. you know, I don't know if that sums it up for you. That, but. That, no, that's good. That's good. Then there's, there's the call to action. The call to action is not to, to like and subscribe and to send this to all your friends i mean the call to action is to is to take the message of, of the gospel which has the good news absolutely but it also has the the reality check too and to take that and to, to apply that to your life and don't go on staying asleep so mm -hmm. greg downey so great for you grateful for you joining here perm ventures um it's the the world that we live in is there is darkness and there is good and i don't want to be doing business in in places that doesn't align with with the good and so for someone who's looking to invest i'd strongly encourage you to go check out perm ventures and understand p-u-r-i-m perm to go understand um, the type of business they're doing the type of investments that you can get in there because again you, you want people who are spain, playing on the same side here greg thank you sir and we'll uh, look forward to the next episode Thank you. Thank you again for listening to Wealth Well Done. Be sure to subscribe to the show on your favorite podcast player. And together, we'll continue to improve our relationship with money and our effectiveness in stewarding it well.